I hate getting up early, I hate being cold, and I hate the idea of ice baths. But if I'm in a pretty dress, you can convince me otherwise. Now we all know that Rapunzel is my girl, but before there was Rapunzel, there was a certain little fishy that had my heart more than anything in the world. I freaking loved Ariel, and little Nikki wanted to be a mermaid so bad. So for Mermay, in honor of the live action Little Mermaid that's coming out this month, I'm going to make little Nikki's dreams come true and make Ariel's dress. But not just any dress, because I've made all of them at some point. I'm finally going to tackle the ending dress, also known as her victory dress and spill coffee all over myself because I'm that excited. Let's get to designing. This dress feels the most mermaid turned human to me thanks to the slinky curve hugging lines of the dress. However, that cowl neck is way too chunky, so we're going to fix that. I love that in the animation, the dress sparkles from her magical transformation, but it also reminds me of how the ocean sparkles when the light hits it. So I want to pull in that inspiration into the dress and make it feel like the dress is really made from the ocean. In the original story by Hans Christian Andersen, the Little Mermaid turns into seafoam at the end, and so I want to pull some of that inspiration into the dress as well, with an organza ruffle hem at the bottom to look like the seafoam as the waves crash. Lastly, I saw some wedding dresses on Pinterest that had this lace nude illusion mesh bodysuit effect to it, and I had also seen some seaweed looking lace fabric downtown in the fashion district, so I want to pull that inspiration into the dress as well. So, with our design ready, let's begin. So you'll never believe it, but I actually started this dress by building a corset. I know, I know, I'm just so ingenuitive, so creative, so groundbreaking, you can hold your applause, it's truly okay. But really, the success of this dress is gonna come down to having a very strong foundation layer upon which the rest of the dress can sit, taking the weight of the dress off of the tiny, tiny straps. This dress will be built much like haute couture dresses are built. Instead of my usual two layers of twill and then a fashion fabric and spiral steel boning for the corset, I'm instead going to opt for one layer of twill and German plastic boning, not Rigeline, that stuff is shit, don't use it, because I intend to go in the water with this dress and steel boning will rust if it's exposed to water. I took my standard corset pattern that I use for everything and I made some adjustments to the neckline to make it wider and the scoop of the cowl neck shape and then draped a cowl neck pattern over top. From there, I needed to draft the skirt pattern. And because I already had my corset pattern, this was going to be very easy. All I had to do was take my corset pattern, trace it onto some butcher paper, find my waist to floor length measurement, and then mark that all the way down the paper, extending the lines of the corset all the way down. And since my corset pattern already had seam allowance, I didn't need to add any along the sides. I only added a half inch on the top edge for where the dress was going to flip over the edge of the corset to be sewn down. To get the gathering on the leg slit, I used the slash and spread method of patterning, which is where you cut some lines into your pattern, spread it apart, and add some paper behind it to denote where you're going to gather the fabric. After cutting out the first panel pieces, I didn't like how little gathering there was because you could always go for more. And so I ended up slashing it even higher and adding even more gathering on my second round of patterning. Once my pattern was done, it was time to move on to the fabric. I had found this stunning metallic blue Lurex down in the fashion district for like $6 a yard a couple years ago. And I knew that this was the perfect fabric for the dress because of the way it sparkled. Just when I promised my partner that I was done with glitter projects, I pull out the fabric that I bought for this dress years ago. And the glitter drama continues. After cutting out all of my pattern pieces, I began by gathering up the ruched edges along the front side seam. I did this by running a long running stitch and then pulling the top thread until the fabric collapsed on itself. And then I put the seams together along the ruched sides and very slowly sewed it together. This is a lot of fabric to go under your sewing machine, so take it very slow and make sure you don't have a lot of tension on your presser foot. The rest of the dress came together really quick from there. I just attached all of the front panels together and then attached the cowl neck to the underbust line. 
Then I attached all the back panels together and then finally sewed them up at the side seams. I did take care not to sew up the entire center back seam where I was going to put a zip so that way I could place it onto my mannequin. I laced the corset onto my mannequin with a two inch lacing gap, which is how I intended to wear it. And then I put the dress on over top and began pinning it into place, overlapping that half inch seam allowance onto the inside of the corset so that I could stitch it down later. Then I placed the dress back on the mannequin one more time and began pinning these seam allowances on the back center seam to where they just touched and then basting in a zipper so that I could try it on and make sure that the center back and the zipper was going to lay exactly as I needed it. Once I confirmed it fit properly, then I permanently sewed in the zipper. At this point, the dress was done and wearable, but it needed more sparkles. So I went downtown in search of the seaweed lace that I had seen before and some other accoutrement to put onto it. I found some options, but nothing like the seaweed lace I had found before. And so I narrowed down my hunt to these two fabrics and then eventually decided on this one. And then I learned the price, which was $60 a yard. And I really only needed a half yard, but they don't do half yard cuts downtown. So I cried a little as I handed over my card and whispered to myself, do it for the art. <laughs> I'm allergic to spending that much money. As a poor, I make my clothes because it just is cheaper and fits better than anything I can get off the rack. But not in this case. <laughs> With my fancy ass fabric in hand and trying not to think of the things I was about to do in this dress, I headed over to the Trim and Rhinestone store to find some pearls that I could adorn the dress with. Way too much money later, I got home and proceeded to cry, I mean cut apart the lace fabric and began appliquing it onto the dress, finding a design that I liked by moving the motifs around. One reason I got this lace over any of the others was because it had a really nice selvage that I knew would be perfect for the neckline and the sleeves of the dress. This one also had a nude <coughs> Caucasian base that would be perfect to blend into my skin for that nude illusion effect. Once everything was pinned on and I liked the way it looked, I spent about three hours hand sewing it all onto the dress. The last step was to add the seafoam effect to the hemline. So for that, I cut some spirals out of my organza fabric. Using a spiral cut is a really great way to get that ruffle effect on the hem without using tons and tons of gathered fabric, which we all know gathering yards and yards of fabric is not the most fun, especially if you're doing it at midnight before a 4 a.m. shoot. It is midnight. I am covered in <laughs> glitter, but the dress is done and Rachel has come over. We're going to go to El Matador tomorrow morning at 4 a.m. to hopefully get a sunrise shoot. So I, I will see you in the morning so that we can get some photos and video. Good night. Now, I hate getting up early. I hate being cold and I hate the idea of ice baths. But if I'm in a pretty dress, you can convince me otherwise. Well, more like if I ask my best friend nicely, I can convince her to get up at 4 a.m., drive an hour down to the rich people beach, and jump into the freezing ocean with me so that she can take pretty pictures of me. <laughs> no, not like that, like this. Thank you so much for being a part of my world and for supporting my art. If you'd like to support the channel and future videos, as well as get yourself a nice little thingamabob, I started a jewelry line. I designed and had this made based off of my favorite garment, the corset. They are 18 karat gold plated and a very fun way to show your love of vintage and fantasy fashion. You can find the link in the description to purchase. If you enjoyed this video, consider sharing it with a friend. Maybe a friend that you can drag into the ocean at 4 a.m. With, with love, of course. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to unplug and go make something. Bye! Better fix 
all my problems, you little shit.